The cantata was commissioned at a turning point in European history, and it's the first time we see Beethoven dealing with political ideas. The storming of the Bastille in France had sent shockwaves throughout the continent. And here, Beethoven seems to bid farewell to Europe's past by giving this work an image of an idealized golden age of aristocratic heroism, just as so much of Europe is on the brink of devastating revolution. Beethoven had attained recognition in Bond's aristocratic circles. It was now time for him to seek a wider horizon. His life in Bonn could only take him so far. He was well aware of that. And he had so much more to learn in Vienna. But he knew not to rely on anyone. That much he'd learned from his childhood. It's hard to say goodbye. It's something I know you have to do. But if only it weren't such a long way away. Eleonora would like to say goodbye. I'm late. I'm sorry. Please don't be angry with her. I wasn't able to return his love. And, in his usual way, he was angry with me for it. He wrote to me from Vienna, and slowly, we were able to be friends again. At the age of 21, Beethoven left Bonn behind him and set off to seek his fortune in Vienna, the musical capital of Europe. He arrived with an invitation to study with the world's greatest living composer, Joseph Haydn. Welcome to Vienna. How are you getting on? Oh, come, sit, sit down over here. Over there. Now, I was shown a manuscript of your cantata when I visited Bonn. <laughs> yes, your patron, Waldstein? Yeah. He told me you were brilliant. <laughs> yes, he said, with a lot of hard work, you shall receive Mozart's spirit to the hands of Haydn. <laughs> and what do you make of that then? Well, I would be um, honored to study with you, Herr Haydn, but you know better than I do that every true artist must find his own path. Of course. An extraordinary young man. I wasn't surprised at his impatience. After all, I suppose this was a young man in a hurry, and I was a composer in my twilight years. But I sensed that in time he would give the world something to talk about, and I would be proud to call myself his teacher.
Soon after he arrived in Vienna, our father died. I wrote to tell Ludwig, but uh, he didn't come back for the funeral. In fact, he never returned to Bonn. I was more than happy to follow him to Vienna. There was nothing in Bonn for me. I suppose, in a way, I was living in his shadow. Ludwig got on with his life. His new life. The death of his father meant that Beethoven could finally put his childhood behind him. Before long, he was being fated in the salons of the Viennese nobility as the city's most exciting newcomer. Nothing could hold him back. Embarrassing, to say the least. All I meant to say was that the public may not take so readily to such a difficult and stormy finale. But the work was outstanding, it made me proud. And uh, I asked him uh, later if he would put Pupil of Haydn on the piece. It's a normal practice, but not for Beethoven. He refused outright. Perhaps it was necessary for the young composer to carve his own way. He needed to make his work distinct from that of his contemporaries or teachers like Haydn. He does that here in the F minor piano sonata, setting himself challenging ground rules in order to express the maximum. Whereas composers like Haydn and Mozart might achieve contrast through key change, Beethoven here sticks pretty much to the one key, F minor. 